YouTube, Ryan Keith Films, you know, YouTube, you all that. Uh, you already know. Fuck Here's the podcast. You fuck know. you, it's milk. It's, it's not water. Music, water. It's, it's music it's videos coming in Colorado. Got music got videos, BWA, Money Yo, Fall Greasy coming. She's like, wow, 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 wow. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like Post Malone with that grass. Feeling like I'm rolling, I ain't coming down. I don't give no fucks away. My High Minute, number one podcast in the universe. Today, I'd like to welcome two very special guests. We got K Cobb, promoter out of Denver, as well as artist Big Wing out of Florida. Big facts. So, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? Introduce yourselves. Uh, Let's get into it. Yeah, I'm K Cobb. Uh, I'll do promoting out here in Denver. Uh, also, do management for certain artists, but not really doing that right now. Just mainly focusing on the promotion, so people need promotion here and there. Yeah, I'm Big Win. I uh, you know Big Win music, uh, everything, big things only, etc. Uh, I'm from Central Florida, Gainesville specifically. It's my first time in Colorado, so yo, so, yo shout out my high man for bringing me out. It's just lit. Yo, All right, so appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah, of course. So. Starting now, let's talk about like the services you provide as a promoter out here in Denver. What kind of stuff you get into? How do you network and stuff like that? Shit, man, it just depends, honestly. Like these days, bro, I'm very picky like who I work with. I'm gonna be real. Yeah, yeah. Just because I like too many people be trying to like, use me and Thomas, because like Thomas also helps me with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So like networking, like we both network and kind of bring yeah, away, yeah. like pretty much like the people we start working with like together. And then like I kind of do like artist plug stuff too. If certain artists need stuff when they come out here, I kind of try to plug. I try my best. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I plug them out. Like, like sometimes, like their managers and stuff like that, throw me a little bread for that. For the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like make it happen. Type yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah do that. All right, cool, cool. Okay. And uh, what are some of the big names you've worked with? Shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of people. My favorite, and I was talking about today with these guys right here. Honestly, Solid Baby, bro. Solid Baby is the best. 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 Baby is the best. Solid 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 Baby just it happened out of nowhere type okay. shit. Okay. So it happened like naturally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I went to go That's link up with Jordan, not even Dolph because Jordan, because like Jordan's like, bro, I fuck with him. And like we worked with him before and stuff like that. He's just real. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I, he's like, yo, come back. The like after the show, he just said, come back here. I was like, all right, walk back. Went to the little, um, the, Nah, no, what the fuck, bro? It was behind the damn, uh, God. No, yeah. God, God, Jesus God. Christ. That's the first time. Like, and the second time, like, he just told me to pull up to the shit, and I waited for him in the back, and we just went mm -hmm. in. But the first time, bro, how like, I met Dolph was, like, because of Jordan, no matter what. But, like, he got kidnapped. Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> not on the tour <laughs> bus. Just like, with Jordan, like, Dolph was way in the back, so yeah. like, I didn't even see his name. <coughs> and then, all of a sudden, I was just try, like, hitting, to talking to Jordan, bro, and this full of Dolph's uncle was, like, up here, bro. I had to meet the uncle, bro. He's cool as fuck. I was like, this old, this old fool's lit. And he had the fucking paper route chain on and shit. So I was just chilling, bro. And then uh, the door shut. And I was like, wait a second, the music's smoking. And Jordan was like, oh, shit. He's like, well, I guess you're coming with. I was like, coming with where, bro? I thought we was going. I was like, whoa, wait, hold on, bro. I can't go to the goddamn Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is happening? But then we just ended up going to this grow and shit. And then this full shot, yeah, it was lit. That's when I got to meet him and talk to him. Yeah, you yeah. know, he's very standoffish at first because I'm being yeah, fucked, bro. The full shot at yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this full has been shot at and all that. Yeah, yeah. He's just like cool though, bro. Like for real, he's real. That's the thing. And like everything he says, bro, is real. 100%. That's why his music is doing so well. Because that fool don't, he's not a storyteller, man. That's, mm -hmm. That fool's real. Like he's storytelling, but the real story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers out here just saying and shit and ain't doing it. That's, that's why a lot of this shit right. kind of cool sometimes, but then it's just like, I don't know, man. Yeah. But that man, Dolph, bro, everything he said is 100%. I feel that. That's what's up. So okay. That's why he's just cool. Yeah, that's, that's what, uh, he's probably one of my favorites. Jerry, <coughs> big win, talk about like the scene in Florida a little bit. Um, how's, yeah, talk about that. How's it going? Well, that's what's funny, man, is like, shit's been kind of like happening fast, bro. It's because like, 
whenever where I came up, there was there wasn't a scene like yeah. dirt roads, trailer park type shit, and so I had to like move. <clears throat> and once I moved, it was it's been like a little bit over two years now, and it's like once I moved, I entered like this little fucking freestyle competition shit. It was funny. I won that, <clears throat> won a little bit of money, and then I got plugged in with like a promoter and I started doing a couple shows um, and met a couple other people like I don't know I was able to do like Riff Raff and Bone Thugs and Harmony and just a, a few like really big shows that kind of like gave me an idea of like what I wanted out of everything <clears throat> and then like I just kind of went off of that but there isn't really much of a scene in like central Florida you gotta go south like Orlando and then Miami and like St. Pete and uh -huh. stuff like that okay. that's where it's like there's a bigger scene and stuff like that. And it's funny for me because it's like, part of like everything I want to do is kind of bring a scene back to where I came from. Cause like, even now, there aren't like any fucking clubs or anything. In my my hometown originally was Ocala, even though I was born in Gainesville. But long story short, it's like, there aren't any fucking places to perform, to book any like big acts, there's nothing. It's like, these, those people like country still, like, and it's stupid, bro. But, yeah, yeah. And it's like, don't get me wrong, it's like music, music, man, but it's just like, there's still a lot of people in that town that's just like, on the platform to like, yeah, yeah. try to develop themselves, or to have, bring people out to like, even just like, you know, enhance the hip hop community. So I don't know, it's like one of my things, but I love the Florida scene. There's a lot of emerging artists, I mean, like, in just the past couple of years, fucking X, Punk, fucking Smoke Perk, fucking all out of like, South Florida and shit. And just like, yeah, yeah. definitely a lot of different people, but I, I think it's one of the scenes that's like really developing, and it's like over the next few years, there's gonna have more and more artists that like come out because it's like right next to Atlanta, you know? Yeah, yeah. Atlanta's pumping out hits, and it's like, I don't know, it's just funny. But yeah. So you're, you're from up north a little bit, where you, and you say it's a little more underrated. Yeah, well, um, like Central Florida, that's what I mean, okay. is like people think. <clears throat> Florida and anything like beaches and shit like that, but it's like really that's like a couple hours in each direction type shit. And don't get me wrong, it's like it's not that far away, but it's like Central Florida is like swamps and fucking forests. <laughs> yeah, you're out there. Like yeah, like it's a lot of it's a lot of fucking shit. Like, um, and there's not really that much of a scene, like because like Miami's still like you know four or five hours away. Like Atlanta's, but still Atlanta's like four hours away. And it's like, it's like right in the middle of those two places. So I think yeah, like yeah, yeah. definitely just in the last couple of years, especially like South Florida and shit's been going crazy. How's Colorado treating you? Good, man. I mean, it's cold, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what got me, it wasn't like, it wasn't like so cold, but it was the wind, man. Yeah, it was yeah. like, that shit's ridiculous. I know, it's like, ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but, um, fuck off. It was really cool. I got to like, uh, I got to go like downtown Denver, you know, like, you know, everything around there. Um, I got this like little cabin up in Evergreen, so it's like it's kind of lit. It's like looking at a bunch of mountains, and I got to do some, you know, shit out of Red Rocks, and you know, I just kind of like do some exploring and stuff. I definitely want to come back. It was just like something I took advantage of as far as like cheap flights and stuff like that. But um, is your first time out here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was like my first time out here. But um, oh, yeah. but no, it's just funny, man. It's like it's definitely a cool place. It's really interesting, and like Ryan commented on it. Um, Previously, he said it was really clean. Denver surprised me because I was like, shit. Even though it's like, there's ha like, there's parts of it like are like really like look shitty, obviously. Yeah. But other parts are like nice, but it's like overall it seemed seemed kind of clean compared to like, bro. It's like, yeah, but then like New York and L. A. and shit, and that shit was just like trashy, bro. No matter where you went, it's like, yeah, yeah. all right, it smells like piss, <laughs> and it's like it snowed two days ago, and nobody cleaned it up, and I was just kind of melted everywhere, and that smells like piss now too. <laughs> But no, Colorado's nice, man. I, I like it. But um, I just need to come back when it's not so cold. See, we yeah. try to, <laughs> we try to give you the Denver experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so back to the music. So you started out with music, and how did you link up with Supreme Patty and kind of get to where you are now and doing what you're doing now? Well, you know, it's like I, I like music and I always like hip hop and stuff and rap and stuff. So it's like I came from a place where it wasn't even realistic. Like. There wasn't really like anybody who had ever done it, like or like there wasn't. I don't know. It's like the biggest people that ever come out of my town is this fucking rock band called The Day to Remember, mm -hmm. and it's like fuck yes, yeah. And it's just like I don't know. It's weird, dude. Like, cause for a long time I was like, okay, so you're gonna be a rapper? I was like, this is what you just do. This is what you do. Yeah. And I, was, I didn't. I couldn't take myself seriously because there was no like platform to compare myself to. But after a while, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. You know, I'm not. I'm not really like. 
cool with where I was at. I was working a shitty job. Uh, <clears throat> didn't really have <clears throat> the studio access or like the connections that I needed to do anything. So like, I quit my job. I moved to Gainesville. Um, and I, like I said, I spoke on a little bit previously. I in that competition, made some um, promoter and producer plugs and just got shit going. And then about a year ago, Patty was coming up out of Gainesville. <clears throat> yeah, and it was weird because he was from Daytona, which was like, it's like two hours away from Gainesville, but I guess he moved to Gainesville, and um, the kid who does all his videos is Mills, really cool dude, but um, they're both really like, that's what's funny, is they're both really down to earth people compared to like how they are online. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. just mean like, like. Yeah, I watch some stories about Yeah, that. people think like, I don't know, it's like, it's like something I said previously is like people, first thing they think about him is like, squeezing lemons and limes and his eyes and shit, but it's just like, I remember him playing hella PS4. And he was just low key clutch at every video game. <laughs> like, he would whoop your ass at every video game, just no matter what. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, it was funny, man. It's like, so I linked up with him about a year ago. Um, was this like? I got, this was just because I had Ryan hit him up about videos because I knew he was making music and like that, that was kind of the avenue I was going with. This was before I had done any of the things, like as far as like skits or anything. Yeah. Um, and I was just focused on music, so it's like, we got him in the studio with Thomas Swanson, Swan Beats, and shoot it. It's like, and it's funny because that even everything is still lasting. Like that Melly track that he just dropped, like was still produced by Swan, who like who does all my music oh, yeah, and was like the same guy yeah, that he cool. linked up. Like he has his own studio downtown now, but like blah blah and fucking like some a lot of Patty's earlier shit was recorded like in his fucking bedroom, like dead ass. Yeah. And um, that's crazy. Yeah, it's just funny, man, because it's like it originally started out as like just me making the song featuring him mm -hmm. and then it just like over it just worked out where it's like we decided you know it's like it would be him featuring me etc and then um world star drop happened which was crazy <gasps> yeah and yeah it's just been going from there man i'm just trying to keep up momentum um dropping singles and stuff i'm, pro I'm gonna have one dropping soon called no off days i got another one after that i think called this morning and then this one I'm doing here called uh, Till the Wheels Fall Off. And I also got a couple with Patty and one with like Patty and Mills. And yeah. all with, all I don't know Mills. if you're familiar with like Just the Juice, but um, he's like a Instagram guy. But yeah, I okay. um, might do a song with him soon. Just, you know, working on some shit. Oh, yeah. um, trying to like just explore different avenues and keep shit specifically consistent. Because that's really the whole thing is like at this point it was kind of a like weird high and low. Because it was like, you know, it's like. That's the, one of the biggest things I've been a part of, biggest things he's been a part of. So really, it's not. I don't feel it as like not being able to like live up to that or anything. It's just yeah, like yeah. it feels really comfortable to be like, all right, so it can be done. And now yeah, it's yeah. just like, you know, it's just we gotta focus on like what's working and always like moving forward regardless. Because it's like whether it's like ten people or ten million people watching, it's like you gotta keep that same energy, you know. And it's tight that like it wasn't just like a one song, all right, peace out. It was like you guys built a relationship out of that. Yeah, no, that's that's what's funny, man. It's like I went out to. Um, I went out to Miami recently, like, uh, I just fucking, I was talking, the last time I talked to him was like the, the uh, day he was, the, the, a couple days ago when he was dropping the song, because I was telling him the whole time, because it's like, he had sent me the song previously, and I knew that shit was going to be a hit, like, I was like, I knew that shit was going to do numbers, like, I was convinced, just because it was like, the way, it's just catchy as fuck, it's got like a million in four days now, which is crazy, but, um, but yeah, no, like, and it was kind of weird, because, after a while, you know, moved out to LA mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But it's like, even at the same time, it's like, bro, paid, paid for my flight out to LA and like, let me stay with him and shit. And like, oh, yeah, yeah he's no, he's, he's, he's a cool dude, man. And it's like, every now and then I'll be like, hmm, I wonder what he's up to. And I'll text him, and he'll just like text hit me back eventually. And it's just cool, man. It's like, I'm yeah, probably yeah. gonna try to go down there again soon if I can with Swan. So yeah, you got music out as well as some skits. I see. Are you focused on both still? Trying to push both? Is there one area you're more focused on pushing rather than the other? Or? Well, and that's the thing about it, man, it's just like music, as far as promotion, as far as like putting money into it, as far as like spacing things out, it's like, you know, it's like, you don't want to drop too much. Mm -hmm. You don't want to uh, oversaturate your own market and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it's kind of like catchy next week mentality. You know, it's like you want to build hype. Uh, but the skits are kind of something that like, it, it helps fill in the gaps and fill in time and stuff, you know? So it's like, um, I got a lot of stuff I've been able to work on and do musically and I haven't really slowed down anything because it's like I've been able to do those and help draw attention to the music and also to me and just kind of back and forth. And so it's kind of almost just like I'll try to be like putting out like one song or one video 
every month or two at least, mm -hmm. you know, and put some real like it's emotion behind it. But in that time, it's you know, every one or two weeks, I'm also trying to get one of these skits done. So it just keeps me on my feet, keeps me thinking of like new ideas, but also at the same time, it's like keeps the audience engaged rather than just like not being able to put, you know, it's like one day it's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a bigger team and stuff like that, but it's yeah, just like yeah. that's all part of the process. Consistency is key for sure. Cool. And for you, um, I know you started out in fashion. How did you transition to the promotion side? You know, I mean, it was always promotion, but okay. it was like, when you, once you're a promoter, you can really, if you know what you're doing, you can play with it, bro. You can yep. you just gotta expand your mind. We worked with Johnny Cupcakes before. Bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, that shit was lit. Secret shopper for, for uh, Johnny Shop Cupcakes. I got that involved with their yeah. marketing yeah. director and shit. She hit me up and was like, I want to get your partner to go out to our pop up. And, you see your shoppers and tell me how it is and blah blah blah. So you got a bunch of free really cupcakes. That's, 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 that's tight. tight. Probably it's high ass cupcakes too. Can't yeah, I heard about that secret shopping with like other brands yeah, too, like yeah. the onions. That's, that's interesting marketing. Yeah. Well, so what are the differences between like creating music and creating art through uh, different ways such as promoting and like skits, stuff like that? What are the differences? There's all kinds of differences. But there's also like a lot of similarities too. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But honestly, bro, if you just, I don't know, you just gotta know, really, you gotta know business first. I don't care what happens, you gotta know business. So speak on that, so the way. biggest difference is you're gonna be looking at is like on how the diverse areas, like music's a lot more cutthroat than the clothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, that's, that's pretty much the ancient part. That's like really one of the biggest differences. Yeah, yeah. And then also like in the that's clothing, right. the fashion world, um, more people know business than the hip hop industry okay. or even like the music industry in general. A lot of, um, a lot of people just think they know the business and then, mm -hmm. hey, cool, you get two like two videos that hit a million views, but what are you gonna do with it? You yeah, didn't make yeah. a dime off of it. Right? Yeah. So how are you gonna make the money? And like, but when you go to the clothing world, that's everybody knows it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's easy. Definitely. I like it. I like it. Okay, so what do you guys <coughs> have <coughs> moving forward in your careers? What are some goals, some dreams, or whatever you guys have in mind? For Just to help the city. Yeah, I'm trying to build more in the city now, bro. I was trying to do a lot of that, like extra shit, we, like different places. But exactly. I wanna, yeah, I wanna Our biggest be, thing is we we were like when we close. jumped into it, we Facts. we were kind of selfish, kind of egotistical because we did have the the connections to back us. And we had the kind of like the resume to back us, so we we kind of went to went to the head a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. And now we, we sat down and thought within the last like six, seven months, it's pretty much, we're just trying to help the city. With yeah, like exactly. local companies, like we, we don't really fuck with like big name companies anymore. It's more mm -hmm. anything that's dealing with Colorado. Yeah, yeah, shout out, shout out Favor. Yeah, sure. that's what we're trying to do here also. Shout out so. Favor. And then like the biggest thing that we got going on right now is with the uh, Finesse Factory with Ray Ray. Wall. Mm -hmm. And we're helping him out getting, he's one of the top artists out here in Colorado. And he's like really, really business oriented. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like he knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to business and also the music. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like you got, you said, you guys have built like a, a good resume and stuff. What kind of advice <coughs> could you give to the Maha Min audience about networking, creating a name for yourself and just business in general? All of you. Yeah, let's start that. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a topic that we can go out for. Networking, yeah. what kind of advice do you got? Feel like networking, just business in general. Well, you want to know what? And don't take this. Like, this is what I learned, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you got to work with everybody. Don't matter mm -hmm. to follow you, bro. Who cares? That's, that's 250 nice. people that may not never that's seen good. us before. There's that's 250, nice. there's 300. Who gives a shit? People, people, like, oh, I hear people, bro. They get bougie with that shit. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. The biggest thing, biggest advice that I usually give everybody that's always came to me work, and work, him work. Mm -hmm. is. You gotta have the like. It's just like joining the military. You gotta have the heart for it. If you mm -hmm. don't got the heart for it, then it's it's gonna be it's gonna eat you alive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's stressful, but biggest advice is just keep pushing at it. Like he said, you always gotta work with anybody and everybody. Get your name out there because we can go to a different scene. We're not cool. Like anybody and everybody. That's what the, you know. <laughs> you I mean, anybody sense. and everybody. The reason why is because it doesn't matter what the following is. Because if like okay, cool, they have a thousand followers. That's a thousand extra yeah, people. Not yeah, that are looking at you. So, mm -hmm. and even like shows wise, and that's why I tell artists is like, you, when you're starting off in the hip hop industry, start small, get your name out there in the city, and then start going to different counties, and then did a out of state. Yeah, yeah. Always want to get you the your main your main everybody's main platform needs to start with the city they're living in. Yeah. If you're not going to get known in your city, then what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Because you need local support before you get uh, nation support. Yeah, and I feel that too because. 
It's a, a lot unless, about consistency. Yeah, and unless you, when you, to like you know, who knows? Even if you're working with the, the small dog, you can do it. You know, And what about you, big man? What advice you got? What? Conversation. Um, I think it's a. It's definitely like a process, man. The key, pe the key thing is, especially in regards to like music, that people don't get about it is like overnight success is not something that's normal. Exactly. It doesn't just happen for people, and specifically, it no, like specifically, it takes about ten years. And I don't care. You can look at all of whoever, Meek Mill, Kendrick Lamar, any uh, so many other nameless fucking artists. Um, Ten years. Yep. About ten years is when it cracked. Uh, usually, they'll start off at about sixteen years old. By the time they're twenty-six to twenty-seven, they're like at the peak of where they're going to be musically, true, true. and that's when they're going to break through if they are going to do it. I'm about two or three years into that, and so I still feel like even regardless of any amount of success I have, I still have about seven years left. And bro, it's like that's the whole thing. Is like people are looking at it so like small-mindedly yeah. because it's like if you really think that this is something like a lottery ticket where it's just it's like this is your access to the game and it's just gonna pay off and not realize that you are one of a million fucking people trying to do the same thing. But at the same time, at the same time, the audience farly outweighs the people that are actually doing it. It's the yeah, same yeah, shit yeah. with the comedy, it's the same shit with music. There are so many more people watching than there are people doing. So if you want to be one of the people who are doing and getting those big fucking checks, you have to do it for years and years and years until you can figure out the pivot or the move that you're going to make that's going to get you in the lane to go exactly. and do whatever it takes you time. Do that's that. Oh, yeah. And that's what a lot of people, out, especially out here, you know, mm -hmm. you'll probably notice the more you come out here, a lot of people out here in Colorado, they just think it's going to be an overnight success. Right. Yeah. But they don't, like, like, they don't actually... Oh, I'm like, bro, chill out. Just... That's all thing. It's all about having yeah. no. They don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hundred thousand hours yeah. at least. Mm -hmm. At least. All right, cool. Well, that'll do it for this interview. Big shout out to K Cobb for appreciate coming you. through. Big win. I appreciate you. And management chopping it up with the Maha Minute. All links will be in the description for everyone. Yeah. Uh, go check those out. Maha Minute, number one podcast in the universe. Catch oh. y'all on the next one. Nigga Nate Street, we meet Supreme Patty. Oh, yeah. Here's. <laughs> <laughs> you put it on the speaker. Yeah, I'm gonna take it right your speaker? Yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. It is a. Is it Blitz on? Yeah, it's Phillips. This is a good night, dog. I just might pull up to the party, shoot it up and play the same way. Bitch, give me Nick, and I told him, bitch. Wax, they don't just compress almonds and boom, almonds. Yeah, yeah. You don't know? I do know. It's very well publicly accessible information. I just bought things on the But also, fuck all the notes. Like, I have to fuck all the notes. I don't want to be doing anything. I'm not going to have all the You get to call it a spring. So, do you get like 80% off of that World Star thing? I'm not going to lie, you guys don't know. What about like. I'm assuming you have some type of monetization on YouTube or something. No, I don't get paid by YouTube or anybody. I get paid by my clients, like if somebody who puts me for something. Okay. Yeah. When are you gonna start doing that? When I have enough uh, views and like, uh, yeah. like an organized, you know, group of people need, like, that I like targeting. Thousands of subscribers or something. And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is, it, is that what it is? A certain like, view ratio. Yeah, you need yeah. a view yeah. ratio that you have where you can monetize it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a certain amount of subscribers, but at the same time, I also don't think that my shit would meet YouTube's requirements to make money. Just, yeah. And I'm not going to change my content to make money off of YouTube. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I would still use okay. it to make. Uh, like you know, a platform and like yeah, have yeah, people yeah. view my stuff there. Yeah. But I don't think that YouTube would give me money for people doing the shit that I want to do. Yeah, I feel like compound I mean, interest for sure too. I just feel like if you know, it's like if you're getting views, are going like if, they don't, if the views start coming in, they don't. They aren't going to fuck. If yeah, it's, that's if what it's I, just music YouTube. videos, then I I believe that I can make money off of my music video. But Aside from that, just doing other things like what I think YouTube is good for, like like vlogging things and like just like traveling, doing things like that. Yeah. You don't make a lot of money because I'm not gonna just be like National Geographic and be really PG about things. I smoke weed and I do shit like that. I yeah, want to yeah, do, right, right. and I'm gonna be doing that. Big yeah, like yeah. and you can't like curse and you can't do things. You gotta be really PG to make money on YouTube unless you're like doing something like a like a music video or something that meets the requirements. Do you work with uh, Trevor? Yes, Trevor. Yeah, we worked with him. We worked with like, we did a promotion for his like album release a long time ago. Uh, we did a. We're cool with that. We yeah, have the same.
Puppetry. We work with uh, a lot with squizzy gangs such as like AP. AP, AP, we, work AP oh, okay. we work with real well, and then I do a lot of stuff for like with squizzy and all of them, and then also what I was saying with uh, the finesse, uh, the finesse gang. That's uh, Ray Reed. Yeah, yeah. We do a lot of work with them and shit. So. And that's okay. About DNA yeah. the costume. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Dude, that was like honestly, he's the uh, he's the honest blood. Yeah. Like, who was? Hell yeah. He was the one who was like, yo, bro, break me people and we'll get on the toast. Dude, that's how all he got got in there. Mattzilla, he did all that. That's how Mattzilla came out. Like, yeah, he came out for my birthday. I pulled the DNA, fucking plugged in the fucking house shit. We pulled up to the club. You just had fun, bro. It was lit. And she hosted this shit. That's, that's, really, how, that's like, who the table I was at. Torch. I think it is DNA. <laughs> At Onyx. <laughs> yeah. He's cool. He was just saying he can do an interview with us. Yeah. Me and my homie that played on the Jets was like right next to us. So I was like, this is fucking cool. Cool birthday. I pulled Mike Pendle. Mike Pendle. Yeah. Big. I feel like a big old motherfucker. Yeah. 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 Yeah.